Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new headphone from a well-known audio company that's decided to jump into the headphone world. We're talking of course about the Rode NTH100. This is an over-ear closed back dynamic driver moving coil headphone that comes in right at around $150. Let's check it out. Now, just a quick disclaimer here, this was not sent over by Rode. Um, we did just have to buy this. And of course, all thoughts and opinions are my own and I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this headphone. Now, I'm not sure if this resonates with all of you guys, but um, I tend to follow a lot of um, you know, content creator channels or channels that are focused towards helping content creators. And my YouTube channel recommendations list kind of got slammed by a ton of videos covering this headphone. And so that's kind of why it's been on my radar. So as usual, let's begin by talking about the build quality, design and comfort. And I gotta say that the road here for the build quality, just let's just talk about that first. It's fantastic. For this price, this is probably the best built headphone that you could come across, um, considering you know all of the sort of machining and materials that are that have gone into this. Yes, there's a lot of plastic on it, but it all feels like very sturdy plastic. And if you look at the the machining here, like that for this arm piece, I'm sure you guys can see this, that is all one piece, and it's metal for the arm, which is really cool. Uh, it feels very sturdy. It feels like it's not gonna fall apart on you. Uh, and then the arm extension system, they have this little clasp. Now I think if there's gonna be a failure point, it's, it could potentially be this, but this is a, a headphone where you can kind of physically see all the different pieces. So you can actually see the screw on the underside here that holds this in place. You know, this does feel like it's a very well engineered for its mechanical design headphone. Um, one of the better ones that I've seen at this price, certainly. Uh, and then for comfort, uh, it is very comfortable for me. Um, I, I do find that the pads, they're a little bit small, or like the opening for the pads, they're a little bit small. But this is where things get a little bit weird as well. You'll notice that the pads here, they are kind of like a triangle shape. So the triangle shape for the pads, I, I get why they're doing it. You know, ears aren't round. Um, and so some brands go with a more oval shape, um, but Rode has decided to go with a triangle shape. And of course the triangle makes sense because you can you know, mass produce that pretty easily. And I imagine they're gonna make a lot of these. The other nice thing is that the pads are removable here. Let me just show you guys what that looks like. And you can see here's the pad. It just sort of snaps off. Um, and then you have this uh, pretty significant hefty front uh, driver damping foam material here. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I gotta say also, this looks fantastic. This is one of the better looking headphones I've come across. This is the kind of style that really speaks to me that, you know, uh, as you guys know, dead inside, matte black aesthetic. Uh, it's exactly what I look for in headphones and just about everything else. And then interestingly on the bottom here, you can actually uh, put the cable on either side um, and there's a little rubber piece that fits into the other side um, just to keep the seal. And then for the cable, it's a pretty standard no-nonsense cable, decent length, and then when you want to plug it into the headphones, there's just sort of like a locking mechanism that you can turn it and lock it in. And then you can add, they do give you these. Um, there's sort of extra little colored pieces that you can put on the end of the cable, as well as a quarter inch adapter. And what the color pieces allow you to do is, you know, if you have a bunch of these headphones, it allow you to sort of know whose cord is whose if you're, you know, unplugging them and plugging them back in, which is a nice little touch. Lastly, let's talk about isolation and sound leakage. Um, this is pretty good actually, and I, of course, am in a quiet studio environment, but I just recently took these on a trip, um, and even though they're passive, they're not, you know, ANC headphones, they did a pretty good job of isolating me from the environment, and um, very little sound would leak out, uh, which is great. So, you know, if you're in a noisy environment and if you're, you know, needing to edit something, um, this will do well for that, uh, at least for the isolation component. Um, and of course, for drivability, this is meant to be driven off of like basically everything. It's low impedance and high sensitivity, so you won't have any problems there. But let's talk about the sound quality. And of course, I'm going to begin by talking about the objective stuff first. So I'm going to throw the graphs up on the screen here for you guys. But of course, as usual, you know, adherence to and deviation from a target is not all there is when it comes to sound quality. The target here is very coarse grained and the headphones frequency response is very fine grained. And so this isn't really an apples to apples comparison. Um, and there are places where it's totally fine if the headphones frequency response deviates from the target. And there are also places where it should, like at around 9K. Um, but without out of the way, let's take a look at the frequency response of the NTH100. So this is the average of several different seatings uh, done on the Gross 43AG that I'm showing you guys here. And at first glance, this actually looks decent. It looks like it's reasonably neutral, but I'm actually gonna say that this is low key, not great. Um, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, um, there's actually quite a bit of masking and veiling going on um, when it comes to the bass, so the upper bass and then the lower mids that uh, 
that also is kind of exacerbated by a, a significant drop in the treble, a treble roll off. Um, you know, there's there's definitely some good here, and when I say that, you know, at a glance it looks pretty decent, it, it actually does look pretty decent, and it is for some of it. But um, I want to draw your attention to a couple different things here. Um, specifically, the mid bass to upper bass uh, kind of dominates a little bit, so that's quite thick and strong, which on it on its own is not it's not that bad on its own. But coupled with this lower mid range bump. Um, it just sort of drowns out the presence for the rest of the mid-range. Um, even though, yes, there is good clarity there for the for the upper mids um, in, the, in the ear gain region where the ear amplifies those frequencies the most strongly. Um, but this is, this is sort of made uh, much more significant and much more noticeable because the treble, all of the frequencies that are below that are kind of pronounced over the treble, meaning that it, you don't really get the kind of clarity that would otherwise come through as a result of having that upper mid-range presence, uh, which you do want to see. So there's a lot of good here in the in the sense that, you know, the most, you know, difficult area, seemingly, to get right, <laughs> they did actually get really close uh, for the upper mids, but the overall presentation here is one that is very thick. You ideally want to have the bass elevation be lower into the sub-bass, so you get more thump. This will give you a lot more boom and kind of dominate over the rest of the clarity that, you know, again, would otherwise be there. And then this kind of tilting mid-range presentation, I'm just going to go out and say it, it's, it's not great because the mid-range presence for a lot of tones, um, the clarity gets lost as a result of this kind of masking effect in the lower mids that, that also serves to kind of bleed over the rest. You know, if you hadn't listened to this headphone, you were just looking at the graph, you might think, oh, this looks just warm and I like warm, therefore this is going to be good. But this isn't really warm in the way that I think most people who like warm are going to like. Because <laughs> the emphasis to the upper mids, without having the rest of that treble balance there, without having that presence there, it causes it to be warm, yes, because of the boosted lower mids and the boosted upper bass and all that stuff. But it also causes it to be shouty at the same time. Um, so it's, it's this warm shout thing going on. You know, it has this effect where it, it makes all vocals kind of sound like, you know, like Shakira, you know, like singing like you're falling off a cliff. Like, ah! It's a little bit of that sort of like throatiness going on to the whole thing that is a little bit on the unnatural side. And to me, that just, it just loses out on the clarity that should be there, the presence that should be there. So that's my biggest kind of gripe with the frequency response here. I think, again, the, the lower focus, the, the thicker kind of focus there, uh, wouldn't be quite so bad if the treble didn't roll off, but because it does, you know, those two things together kind of make this a bit of a muffled mess. Now, here's where things get interesting. Um, it turns out, let me get, the, where, where, did, where did I put the headphones? Now, here's where things get interesting. If you remove the pad and you remove the damping material, it's this really thick, fe stiff felt foam piece, um, which again, I don't recommend doing because these are glued in and... Yeah, I bet that's going to avoid a warranty, most likely. But if you do it, I'm going to show you what the result is because it does kind of counterclockwise tilt the whole thing. So let's take a look at that now. So you can see here that removing the foam gives a very good result, actually. I am going to caveat this just a little bit, though. While our overall result here is pretty good for the frequency response, for those wanting that warmer kind of presentation, as soon as you do the foam mod, while it becomes quite a bit more clear sounding, it also uh, tends to be a little bit more on the analytic side of things, um, especially with the elevation ear gain and then um, this shows a little bit of a peak there at around 11k. I actually hear this peak a little bit closer to 9k or a little bit further down and that's likely going to shift a little bit depending on the ear of the person because that's sort of where a lot of the variation shows up. I kind of wish that there was a middle ground option for front damping with a less aggressive foam material. Maybe somebody can find a mod for that or put in a different kind of foam material there uh, to kind of find a middle ground for those still wanting that warmer presentation and I'm going to say I still prefer the base elevation to be further into the sub bass rather than the upper bass, but this is a much better result overall. At least for those who prefer a clarity focused presentation overall rather than a warmer, thicker presentation, because that tends to be a bit of a trade-off. I actually prefer it a little bit more relaxed than what, uh, what we get here, but overall I would say this is a pretty darn good result. So if you're buying this expecting it to be very clarity focused, by default it is not. If you remove the felt, it definitely is, but in some ways I'd almost just rather leave the felt in and just do a bit of EQ. But speaking of which, um, the there's actually very high harmonic distortion on this headphone. This is one where the harmonic distortion is high order enough 
uh, if that makes sense, <laughs> where it would potentially be audible because your third harmonic is actually elevated significantly higher than the second harmonic. It's almost like it, this is a, a balanced armature driver. Like it has that same kind of elevated third and elevated fifth harmonic uh, behavior going on. And this isn't at like ridiculous volumes like what you see sometimes in distortion blots at like 114 dB. Like this is, this is at 94 dB. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that that's probably not going to take to EQ all that well. Again, it's mostly in the bass and the lower frequencies where that audibility isn't as, it's not as, you know, audible in those tones. Uh, it's still something where I think it could potentially be audible um, if you're listening at a certain volume. Um, but still, be, be very careful with how loud you listen. Um, in any case, let me talk a little bit about the subjective stuff here. So initially, when I was listening to this, it didn't really pick up on this right away. But over time, and with more sort of comparisons to the AKG K371 and a couple of other headphones around this price, I just I don't find it to be that great at being able to, you know, pick up and isolate the finer little nuances in the music. Um, it's not like the AKG K371 is sort of the last word on that either, um, but it is certainly better than what you get on the NTH100. I find the NTH100 to be um, very reminiscent of the Drop Panda in the sense that you know the trailing ends of tones are just sort of lopped off there. Um, you, I found myself sort of, again, leaning forward to try and hear more because I know that that stuff exists in the music and I just couldn't hear it. Um, another way to describe this would be like if you think about a color gradient and there's very few colors in the gradient, very few shades in the gradient, you notice the, those differences quite strongly rather than if you have lots of shades in the gradient. Um, this is this is a perfect example of too few shades in the gradient um, where you just the finer little nuances for volume are just gone. Um, and yeah, you could maybe attribute that to the frequency response here as well, where that sort of masking from the lower mids uh, kind of intrudes on things. but. Um, even when I removed the the foam piece, I mean, it did improve a little bit, and I think that's partially helped because the the treble balance is brought back. Um, it didn't totally kind of fix that issue for me. So the technicalities and the subjective stuff here, it's not really that great. Um, it's it's actually, I would say, you know, meaningfully worse than the K three seventy one. And so for overall sound quality for the Rode NTH one hundred. Um, while it does certain things well, like it's it's not super weird with its frequency response for much of it, um, it's also not one that I really would choose over the AKG K371. I mean, with the foam uh, mods taking the foam out, um, you do get a little bit more clarity back, but I still think the way that the bass is handled on the K371 is, is a lot better um, with more elevation towards the sub bass. So it's not as boomy, it doesn't mask as much, and um, overall I just find it to be the better sounding headphone. Now, with all of that said though, here's the thing. I do kind of think that Rode has done something good here. Um, I, I'm not gonna recommend the Rode NTH100 over the K371 for sound quality, but I'm absolutely gonna recommend it over the K371 for its build quality, for its form factor. If the K371, this is just a very rickety thing. I've mentioned that before, and anybody who's sort of held this in their hand will, will sort of know what it feels like. And in contrast to the Rode NTH100, like the Rode feels, even though it's made of plastic, it feels like a tank in comparison. So if you're somebody who is not kind to your headphones, I am going to recommend this because it's a form factor that is very appealing. The The build quality is outstanding um, for the price. Other headphones to consider as well here, the Bayer Dynamic uh, DT770. It's one that I'm going to recommend over this one. It's a lot more V-shaped than this. Um, so for people who want maybe lots of bass and treble, that would be the way to go there. Um, and also from this from memory, I, it doesn't have the same kind of blunting character that this one has. So um, it all just sort of depends on what your priorities are. If your priorities are uh, build quality, comfort, aesthetics, uh, then sure, yeah, put the road in the recommended category. But if your priorities are sound quality, um, still no contest. Still still doesn't does not beat out the K371. And I still think there are also other headphones that are better than this one for sound quality. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think. If you've heard this headphone, let me know if you guys like it. If you don't like it, um, what your thoughts are. And of course, if you guys want to know more information on this headphone, there'll be a link in the description to an article that's up on headphones.com, um, as well as to the headphone community forum where folks are talking about this headphone. That's also where uh, I post the measurements in advance of doing these. So if you guys want to see those in advance, that's where to go. Um, and just for more, you know, headphone related um, articles and content, uh, check out headphones.com, the review section there as well. Anyways, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.